I am LaTanya Matthews. I'm just going to share a little bit of my testimony of how God has transformed my life through adversities and through trials and tribulations. I was about five. I did have my mom and my dad in the household. My dad was very controlling. He would have locks and bars on the windows and doors. And whenever he leave, he would lock us in. Whatever he wanted, we had to do it and we had to obey it. He had a, a crazy saying that says, family, sex is better than any. After he want to be intimate with my mom, what he would do is get me, my twin brother, and a sister together and put us in a separate room and pop a porn movie in and give us beers. He was like grooming and preparing us for what's to come. So we grew up watching porn and, and drinking. And he would always massage my shoulders. I would get this eerie feeling on the inside of my stomach like, this is not right. I trained myself to take my mind and say, if somebody else is out there, just help me, keep me, and keep my mind. So that was my escape to be able to take my mind and put my mind on somewhere else once he got you right to that point then he go in to the next level or next stage he starts sending people to have sex with me because i wouldn't have sex with him i was 12 at the time that was one of the times that my dad had massaged my shoulders i'll pay you if you allow me to sleep with you in my mind i'm like yep it's not gonna happen this is the top, perfect time for me to run i went looking for my mom because i said at least i'm gonna tell my mom i knew she was doing drugs but this was the first time I actually seen her do it. And so I went in the bathroom and it was cracked and I seen the needle in her arm. And it immediately, it was like someone inside of me said, no, just go ahead and run. That's when I began to run and I began to leave home. When the police brought me back to the house, they told my mom, you know, here's your daughter. She was in the projects. And so my mom said, can I talk to her? And it was like, sure. So she got in the police car with me. She told me, she said these words. She said, um, you're not gonna understand what I'm about to do, but you will understand someday. And so I'm like, I don't understand, what, what is that? And she said, just trust me. So she got out the car and closed the door and she started screaming, telling the police, get her out of here. She's a liar, take her to foster care. She's not a part of the family. And I'm like, what? And I told her, literally I screamed. And I said, I hate you, I hate you. I hope you die one day. Not realizing the words that I spoke was so powerful. At 13 years old, my dad killed my mom. So I ended up going to foster care and my mom, she ended up getting sick. I remember her telling my grandmother, you know, I got to change my life. I got to change my life. And my granny was telling me that. Your mom says she want to get saved. She want to go, go to church. And my mom did that. She ended up joining the church down the street from our house. And she ended up giving her life back to Christ. But the thing is, my dad was mad because now the control is going to be broken. And he told her, he said, the day that you leave me, and the day that you try to get your life back is the day I'm going to kill you. And he held true to his word. She ended up having a stroke. Went to the hospital. And I didn't learn the full story until a few years later. All I know is she was supposed to come home one day. They called back and said that she ingested some chemicals that they didn't give her. And they was trying to find out who gave her these chemicals in the hospital. And nobody knew nothing. And so it wasn't until like maybe four years after my mom died, my auntie was on her deathbed. And she called for me and she said, I need you to come see me before I leave because my time is short and I need to share something with you. And she told me, she said, the day that your mama was supposed to come home in the hospital, it was two of my aunties and my grandmother. When my other auntie that was talking to me, she said she began to leave the room because my daddy walked up in there. She said, when she was walking up, my mama kept saying, get him out. I don't want him in here. He came in with a do-rag in his hand and he came and he put it over her mouth while she was in the hospital, still connected to the tubes. And they allowed him to do that and while my grandmother and my auntie would watched him take the very life out of my mother he walked away because they were so terrified of him nobody said nothing and it wasn't like it is today if you try that today in the hospital yeah you're gonna be you're gonna be stopped and my auntie told me she said i could not die and not let you know what really happened to your mother i think i didn't realize until last year and i'm 49 so when i was about 48 God replayed that. And he said, this is what she means. Because now, not only did she save you from your dad, but it saved me from being molested by him. Now, he did some stuff, but he never penetrated me. He never had sex with me. It saved me for such a time as this. To bring about awareness to not just domestic violence, because I watched my dad beat my mom. I watched my dad beat me. I watched my dad whoop, whoop people. I watched my dad do these things. But it helped me to get to this place right here now where I'm an advocate telling people, you do not have to endure that. You do not have to go down that road. She did that for me. She did that. She made sure that she saved me. But it took me all these years of being so angry with her. 
But soon as I realized that, it's like a weight lifted off my shoulders. God, I thank you that she had enough love for me to sacrifice her own life by getting me out the household. I was 12 years old and then to 48 years old, then I realized this is what she meant. So af after that happened, when I was 17, my dad had other kids. So I shared with my older brother, which was from another woman, and I told him what my dad was doing. And so he told me, I'm gonna get you out of this situation. I'm gonna move you out of here. So I was like, so excited, like, okay, good. And now I can work on getting my brothers and sisters out of there, but I have to get out the house first. And so he did that, he got me out. I moved in with one of my other older sisters. So once I moved in with her, you know, things was going so good until literally like one day I was taking a shower and my brother picked the lock, came in there while I was in the shower, him and another guy, and they raped me right there in the shower. You helped me get from him because you wanted it yourself. And it just blew my mind. And he said, if you ever tell anybody, you see your son in there, I will kill you and your son. So now, not only do I have to fight for my brothers and sisters, now I got to fight to keep my son alive. I'm 17. This is a whole nother ball game because now this is my blood. This is, this is my daddy's seed, so that's my blood. Blood. That's my blood brother who just violated me. That thing lasts for some years because I was too afraid to tell anybody. I still have a relationship with other men, but anytime he wanted to, to take me or have me, he would just show his face and I know to assume to the position or either it will be consequences behind that. When I turned 19, I ended up getting pregnant. Now I had a relationship with another guy. My mind is like, is this my brother baby? Or is this his baby? I had no idea. No idea until it was time to give birth. My brother's mother and one of my other sisters came up there in the hospital and said, we just want to know if this is your brother baby. So did y'all know that he was doing this? Why would you show up at the hospital? Because I wasn't going to tell a soul. And I thank God because when, when I had my baby, I was able to do a paternity test and it wasn't my brother's. Thank God. That was like a blessing to me that my the, the guy that I was with, he, it was actually his baby. And so after the years went on, I ended up moving away and I told one of my uh, kids' father, I was like, you know what? My brother's not welcome over here. And of course, he my brother would not confront a guy. And so once I shared that with my kid's father, and then he began to be my protector, that was my time to begin to reflect and to heal. And um, I want to say around, I was maybe about 23. My brother was in a bad fire while he was at the hospital in, in the burn victim unit and, you know, clinging to life. He sent a message for somebody to find me because he needed to talk to me. Me being curious, I'm like, I know he can't do nothing to hurt me, so let me go and see what it is that he want. And I went to the hospital and went in there. He looked at me and said, I have done you wrong. And I'm so sorry that I hate, hurt at you. I should have never did that. I should have never touched you. And again, it was like a weight lifted off my shoulder. It don't take away from what he did because the damage was already done. But to know that you acknowledge what you did was wrong and you know that you shouldn't have did that. Whether you did it on your deathbed or not, it was like he did it. And something inside of me broke. Something broke inside of me and I was like, you know what? Now I can live. I left that hospital being free. So that helped me to get on the right path. So I started going out the what Latanya wanted. I started learning to say no when I didn't want to. I started just taking authority over and I started being more of a protector for my kids. I even made sure that if, if, if I'm in a relationship, let them know this is where I'm, this is what I'm working on. If we're not working on the same goal, then there's no need for us to do it. Before I hit 25, I, I met my husband. I didn't think I was gonna actually get married, but I know I put it out there like, you know what? I want a husband to love me for me. And my husband, he didn't, it wasn't the father of my kids. We had no kids, but I said it was gonna take a special man to be able to love all this hell out of me. This man does just that. I was trying to get my sisters and my brothers. I didn't realize that when you take kids out of an environment where they molested, you got to get them help. So by that time, I forgot about helping my, my sister and my brother. She was eight at that time. So guess what? He did. He had his way with her. So I'm taking her in my household with my man, my kids. And guess what? The cycle repeat itself. The first, same thing that my dad did to us, she did to all my kids. So now... I not only have to see what am I going to do because now where I try to protect my kids from being molested, I protect them from the outside, but I didn't protect them from the inside. And they, they always say that it's either you're going to become a predator or you're going to be different from what you were endured as a kid. So now I got a whole nother ball game. My sister. At that time, I was at four kids. I had two boys and two girls. My sister, the one that I was, I came back to Texas to help save, turn it around 
and did the very same thing that my dad was doing to her and was trying to do to me. I didn't even know it happened. My What my kids did is they didn't believe that they could trust me because it was my sister. So they went to school and they told the teachers and then CPS got involved. And I didn't even know CPS had my kids in custody until they somebody came to the house and they said, we have your kids. And they had my kid, my son, oldest sons, to write letters to me to tell what happened. And when I read the letters, I was so angry, so furious. And it took everything in me not to want to kill her. I'm not even gonna lie. I want to take her life because how, I'm helping you get you out of this situation and you turn around and you do this to my kids. And then the thing is, it's like you can, you can either keep your sister or we get your kids back and we deal with your sister, but we can either press charges against her or we can get her some help. God, what is it that I need to do? She was eight years old at the time it happened. So now she's 14. Yes, she's supposed to know, but think about it. She was groomed from a baby on up. So I was like, I don't want her to go to jail. I don't think jail is the answer to help her. But if y'all could just give her some help, give her counseling, she can be redeemed. She she can have a chance at life. So I put her in the system. I gave her up to uh, CPS to give my kids have to give my kids counseling. Uh, my baby girl didn't too much remember it, but the details that my son said that she did, it was so sickening that I was like, my God, I'm, I'm on the path of doing the right things and I'm on the path of healing, but now I get sucker punched and didn't see this one coming because I didn't know that if a person that's abused, if they don't get help, they're going to be just like their predator because that's all they know. They think that that's right. It's a curse that lingers on until somebody take a stand and break the curse. What I had to do is realize, again, I had to tell myself, this is not your fault. You were young. You did the best you, you could do. You tried to save her. It didn't happen because again, I'm still I'm still under 25 and I, I'm not knowing all this stuff. I'm just bleeding with my heart instead of getting more in, getting somebody to help me. I didn't have family members that can help because you know, on both sides of my family, I had some, some sick things going on. So what I did is just, you know, it's just me, my husband and my kids. Let me focus on this. I allow CPS to come in and help us, counsel us. I, you know, most people say, well, I, wouldn't, I don't want them people in my business. No, I needed them in my business because now I need some help and some counseling for my babies. And that's what I did. I leaned on them as long as I could. I let them counsel my kids as long as they wanted to counsel my kids. So they'll know that I'm trying to be in compliance, letting y'all know that, you know, I didn't ordain this. And so I decided it was a 2000. I was like, you know what? I felt like I heard the voice of the Lord saying, now go, go start getting church, get in church. And I'm going to teach you some things. And that's what I did. I leaned on God because I believe that that's who I was speaking to when I was young. It's God. Because I said, whatever force is out there, I know something else is out there. And I did that. So 2000 began my journey of being healed, delivered, and set free. And that's what I did. I, I did that. I went to church, got my kids in church. I think at the time my oldest was uh, eight or nine. And so the rest of them was younger than that because that then I still was having babies. You know, so now at this time in 2000, I'm, I got uh, six kids. I'm six kids in the game. Doing that and, and going to church and allowing not only just the natural with CPS helping, now allowing the spiritual because, you know, we both need natural help and we need spiritual help. So that way we can have a balance. And so that's what I did. I used the tools that were set before me. That's how you get past some of these things. You got to use the tools that's in front of you because if you, it's like faith without works is dead. You got to use it in order for it to work. And that's what I did. I utilized whatever help I could get. Pastor, if I lean on them, depend on them. And I, I told my kids, I have an open door policy. I don't care how bad it's seen, come to me for anything. If you think you want to have sex, if you think you want to get out there, come to me and let me talk you through this thing. Because I told them, your mama done been through all of it. Can't nothing else worse happen to this. I didn't think I'd been to the lowest of the lowest of the low. It was so bad to where I wanted to kill myself and couldn't even do it. So it's like, now let's see how we can do it. I've been down there. So now let's, let's use all these little things as stepping stones to take me to a place where I can be able to be help other people and let them benefit off of what I've been through. Now, what I do now to uh, help encourage the people is I do have a ministry, which is Silent No More Ministries. And it's based off of breaking the ungodly soul ties, undoing generational curses, learning to have a voice, learning to speak up, learning that it's power in you opening your mouth. So Silent No More was birthed back in 2016. 
And it took me to a place to where now I'm an author. I have to write a book. Because he said, now you got to put this in a book and you got to let people know that they don't have to endure from family, from, from incest. What makes mine so so amazing is that I see I had on both sides. So I can talk to you from being domestic violence and being molested by somebody outside the family. And I can tell you by being molested and, and, and all that by the inside, the most intimate people that should be protecting you. I can tell you about all that. So yes, that's what I do now. I'm, I'm with a church, uh, Discipleship Ministries. I link together with them. I've been with them for over 10 years. And my pastor have helped get me to a place where I understand that it's not my fault. Pray with me, fast with me, encourage me. I even have a midnight prayer because sometimes you have to learn how to pray because to me, prayer is key. Prayer is it's not some where you got to have all these big words. Prayer is just talking, God, getting it out. Because sometimes we hold that stuff in, it's like cancer. It'll eat away at us and it'll kill us literally on, from the inside out. And uh, writing the books helped me to get things out. My, I got two books out there. And even now I, I, I created different little pages where I can share and I can reach different audience. Raw and uncut. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Let's not hold this stuff in. Let's go ahead and get it out there. I just want to be used to help others to not go and fall into the same trap that I fell into. It's not that I'm so strong right now. It's just that I, I've shared my story over and over again. And now I'm using this pain to be powered, to tell people you don't have to endure what you are dealt because you have the power to overcome any obstacle or any situation in your life. It lies within us. We have that power.